Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Plus and welcome back to Friday Nights where we make it that much more important. The wrestling show is here. It's the Green Brand and we're known as Mayhem. We have one hell of a night ready for you guys as we are going to be seeing for the first time ever in Universe Mode history a Mayhem Battle Royale featured by all the women. And also, starting off the show, Sheamus will be responding to the return of Ridge Holland playing a very big factor into last week's match. We are also also going to be hearing from the Judgment Day here later tonight, and we are going to be getting a matchup between Akam going one on one with Kit Wilson ahead of AOP's tag team match at Unforgiven, and also World Heavyweight Champion John Moxley is in action as he goes one on one with the Human Highlight World himself. Ricochet, but as we are here, ladies and gentlemen, the Florida crowd has been absolutely beautiful to us here in Jacksonville, and we are ready to go here tonight for wrestling. And look at this as the Celtic warrior himself, Sheamus. He is not a happy man after last week. Last week is when it all went wrong for the big man. You know, I think we can all agree that last week I got screwed out of a chance to go against Chad Gable at Unforgiven. But I'm not going to talk about last week. I'm not going to continue to talk about last week. I am not going to continue to bring up the past. I am looking to the future. And regardless of Unforgiven, the fact of the matter is that Sheamus is the best thing on Friday nights. And I have been since the draft. And nobody can take that away from me. And I will continue to be that with or without the WWE Universe. But I cannot do that. Without addressing my past, the past that I thought that I broke kicked away at WrestleMania, but it seems like I didn't quite get the job done. That seems to be a lot of going on around here. Shame is not getting the job done. Well, I think in order for me to go after a championship, I need to correct this one wrong in my career. And that's you, Ridge Holland. I don't know who the hell you think you are, but I should have kicked you harder at WrestleMania. I gave Pete Dunn a pass, and you see he ran with it. He's going, and he will be doing great things away from me. I tried telling you the easy way, and you couldn't accept it. So I'm telling you the hard way, fella. I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. So you can get away from me. The Sheamus rub is going to be nowhere near Ridge Holland. No more. You lost your chance at stepping up to the Great White. So now... Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the future. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, Sheamus. Sheamus not seeing that one coming. Rich Holland not letting Sheamus' threats go high and dry. Rich Holland feeling aggressive, feeling pain, feeling hurt for what Sheamus did to the brawling brutes. And oh, man, look at this. It's Sheamus. Sheamus, oh man, getting the upper hand here on Ridge Holland. Ridge Holland came here half cocked, not here with a positive plan as Sheamus now. Sheamus, oh, not like this, lining up Ridge Holland for a bro kick. Laying out Ridge Holland, what a chaotic start to mayhem here tonight as Ridge Holland goes face first in the Titan Tron. And now look at this now. Oh! Oh my goodness, we need to get some referees out here. But wait a minute, I'm getting some backstage. Oh man, what the hell is going on here? Brutus and Otis laid out backstage. and Oh, oh my God, Dijak, did Dijak do that? Did Dijak lay out Brutus and Otis? What the hell are we seeing, Dijak? Dijak making a statement, laying out the two biggest men of mayhem, laying out the two biggest men in the Alpha Academy. You know, last week, the Judgment Day were nowhere to be found. Somehow, some way, once again on another night, a Friday night, the Judgment Day are nowhere to be found. Well. If you ask me, that's getting a little tired, a little old. You guys make a ton of threats that you can't seem to back up. Well, let me lay this one out for you real short, real simple. Tonight, tonight I'm in the main event. I'm going against one of the best that Mayhem has to offer, and he is a human highlight, bro. Everybody knows him. His name's Ricochet. 
And I know the magic that we're going to put on. It's going to be exactly that. It's going to be magic. But at the end of the day, at the end of the hour, what I do not want to see is the judgment day. I will be here all night. So if you have anything to say to me, Rhea, Damien, Dominic, JD, if you feel like I slighted you in some way because your leader picked a fight that he couldn't finish, then come say it to me before my match. Don't disrespect the wrestling mat. I'm going to say it once, and I'm going to say it one time only. I'm here. I'm not hiding in a locker room. I'm walking around all night. Come and find me. Well, as the action continues all throughout the night, coming up next, we are going to be seeing a Mayhem Women's Battle Royale. For the first time here in Universal Mode history, the women will be stepping foot in the ring. Eight of Mayhem's rising stars will step up, but that's not all. As coming up later tonight, we will be hearing from the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. As the news broke early Thursday that AJ Styles, who, well, he's not just making an appearance tonight, he's also going to be taking a flight and stepping foot on San Juan, Puerto Rico land because Brian Danielson is back. He is ready to go in ring competition and he is ready to take on the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. We knew this one was coming. We were just waiting on exactly when. Brian went up the weight bearer and said, I want my first match back to be against the guy that took me out. And listen, Wade said, I know this is gonna be a banger. We don't wanna waste this on another episode of Mayhem. We're giving it to you at Unforgiven. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome you back out here to the Mayhem Zone, as we want to thank once again the Jacksonville, Florida, for being a, a great crowd here tonight. And if you haven't done so so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. I want to explain to you what's going down here. We are going to be seeing eight of Mayhem's top women as they are going to be uh, in a matchup all together, middle of the ring. And the winner gets an opportunity against Rhea Ripley at Unforgiven. This one's going to be damn good. As we are going to be seeing a lot of stars, you're seeing a new star there, Cora Jade, a couple of the females already out here, Becky Lynch, Indy Hartwell, seeing Kyrie Sane, one of our newest signings there, and you're seeing here Bianca Belair, Belair making her return here in this battle royale, as we haven't seen Bianca Belair since WrestleMania, it was WrestleMania that Bianca Belair went one-on-one -on -one with Rhea Ripley in one hell of a matchup, I gotta say, a mega star match, to say the least for the women's division and when it comes down to the women's division and exactly where everybody stood I would say that uh, the top of that mountain definitely included Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair and seeing those two Goliaths go at it seeing those two women go head to head it was definitely a sight to see and with Bianca Belair landing here on Mayhem that we've seen in the draft seeing Rhea Ripley land here it, it's incredible I mean, we're seeing two women that just went at it, that just put everything on the line against each other at WrestleMania, and potentially they can do it again if Bianca Belair can get the job done here tonight. She is no stranger to multi-women matches, winning the Women's World Championship back at the No Way Out pay-per-view back this January. But, oh, somebody making their return here tonight. It is Candice LeRae as LeRae making her return here tonight. We haven't seen Candice LeRae since early season two as LeRae was uh, one of the women who just kind of been floating around here in universe mode but now has an opportunity tonight to uh, step up here in the women's division and with that opportunity or with that opportunity comes a ticket booked flight to Puerto Rico as you will be getting a, a front row in front of a amazing crowd with the Raw Women's Championship also. I mean, that's a package deal to say the least. And all you gotta do is get one of these, or, or seven of these women over the top rope. Listen, it can't be done. It's not an easy task though, that's the problem. Who else do we have in this one? Oh man. Man, oh man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know why I'm excited, we didn't know she was signed here on Mayhem, but the first ever Women's World Champion, it is Shotzi. Blackheart, well ladies and gentlemen, Shotzi Blackheart is here and she is ready to go as she made a beeline straight to the ring. You see Becky Lynch already with suplex there to Indy Hartwell. Beautifully done there by Becky Lynch and oh Shotzi starting off hot and heavy here to Candice LeRae as again we have uh, eight of these women in this ring and you know there's only one opportunity 
One opportunity to go against Rhea Ripley for the championship. You know, it's all or nothing right here tonight. And half of these women have faced off against Rhea Ripley in the past. Half of these women have lost against Rhea Ripley in the past. So imagine what that would do to the careers of them moving on here in the future. You see here we have another new signing here in Universal Mode. Kyrie Sane wrestling off there against Bianca Belair. Tough uh, opponent there for Belair as she knocks off Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane being one of the most, you know, infamous wrestlers all over the world here. And now signed with us here in Universe Mode. Imagine if she's going to be the one to go against Rhea Ripley at Unforgiven in Puerto Rico. I mean, it can be done. But ladies and gentlemen, as this battle royale goes on, we are going to have to go on commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Just as a reminder to everybody that coming soon to Universe Mode will be Ilya Dragunov, the Mad Dragon, will be making his way to the green brand right here on Friday nights. Comment your comment on who you think will be Ilya Dragunov's first feud, how much of an impact do you think he'll make, and how dangerous will he be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from commercial break, and as this has been one hell of a tough one, you see, knocked out of the ring there is the first ever Women's World Champion. Oh man, oh man, that is <laughs> a tear to my eye to say the least as Shotzi is uh, eliminated from this one. But as we carry on, it looks like Kyrie Sane's going to get eliminated there, but finds herself back in there. You see Indy Hartwell and Cora Jade going at it. Now those two women being uh, two of the newer women here on the roster or on the women's roster here on Mayhem here in Universe Mode in a whole as we haven't really seen much of Indy Hartwell or Cora Jade. We know of them, but we haven't seen much of them as look at this now. Becky Lynch looking to get knocked out here by the newest signed of Mayhem. Kyrie saying it can be done here and oh, Lynch almost knocked out as Becky Lynch has said in the past that you know, she wants to get another opportunity against Rhea Ripley. She wants to prove that she can get the job done as Becky Lynch hasn't had that one-on-one -on -one opportunity that many have had in the past against Rhea. As look at that now, Becky trying to take advantage. Beautiful super kick there by Cora Jade. Jade now with a little bit of slice bread to Becky Lynch. The veteran getting sat down there by Cora Jade as Becky Lynch is much of a veteran as she is to the younger women here in Universe Mode. She still hasn't had that rise on the top. She still hasn't had that opportunity to... You know, to really sink her teeth into a championship win. As we know, over on the Raw side, you know, triple threat action for the Continental Women's Championship. And over here on Mayhem, we're looking to spread the field a little bit. Give more people an opportunity to go against Rhea Ripley. And now, look at this now, as Indy Hartwell looking to do some more damage here. And oh, man, oh man, not allowing her to do what she wants to do there. Charlotte Flair, another one. Oh, Charlotte knocks her out. Charlotte, one we haven't really talked about in this matchup. First time we are seeing Charlotte Flair in action here in Universe Mode. Looking to go for double elimination here. Got Indy Hartwell. Now looking to go for Candice LeRae. Can she knock out Candice LeRae? As this is Charlotte Flair's first match here in Universe Mode since Survivor Series. And wait a minute. Oh! Warriors press into the backflip there by Be Bianca Belair. Excuse me, to Becky Lynch. As Candice LeRae fights back against Charlotte Flair. And Flair, no stranger to wrestling here on Mayhem. I want to say it before I say it again, uh, first time wrestling here in Universe Mode since the Survivor Series pre-review as she went against Rhea Ripley. How poetic would it be as coming back all this time later going against Rhea Ripley. There's a lot of, there's a field of opponents here as Candice LeRae still in this one, Cora Jade still in this one, Bianca Belair and... Becky Lynch has look at this now as Lynch and Bianca going at it. These two women, Goliaths in their own right going at it as Bianca Belair now has something big in store for Becky Lynch. Drops her down there. Lynch in trouble. Candice LeRae just took out Charlotte Flair. LeRae just took out Flair. Wow. Flair cannot be happy about that one as Charlotte Flair was looking to get an opportunity. Charlotte Flair was looking to move on and, you know, sink her teeth into a championship again as, wow, I was not expecting that Charlotte Flair, man. And, oh, man, Becky Lynch getting a big elimination there as now Lynch. Lynch taking out Bianca now. Suplex and Cora Jade. Becky Lynch on a roll here tonight. This is not looking good. Cora Jade's going to have to find herself in this one if she wants to walk away with the victory. Becky Lynch said all she needs is an opportunity. Bexplex over the top rope. Oh, man. Oh, man. Candace got that big elimination. But right now, Becky's looking too hot. Big power bomb there by Becky Lynch. Riding the momentum right off of the rope and using it to her advantage again. Another momentum advantage there as two... Two very impressive 
very impressive leg drops and that right there that right there just signed sealed and delivered becky lynch all the way to unforgiven ladies and gentlemen this is the match to be as the women's world championship picture just keeps getting big oh oh it just got real it just got real becky's ready for it becky's ready for it she said i knew this was coming becky lynch has seen the mind games of the judgment day for the past year in universe mode she knows what to expect and ladies and gentlemen as we are now in week five in eight weeks leading to one of the biggest pay-per-views the first pay-per-view of 2k24 unforgiven ladies and gentlemen it is set to be big it is set to be bold it is set to make a statement and with a match like this with two giant competitors like this, it only gets bigger. I read somewhere that somebody was worried that the women's championship picture couldn't get any bigger than Bianca Belair versus Rhea Ripley. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think Becky is finally ready. Oh man, oh man. Not even afraid going face to face. And oh man, big boot there by Rhea Ripley. Becky though, Becky having a whole lot left fight in her after that insane women's battle royale. And look at that, oh! Big crucifix there. Knocking down the women's world champion and oh, getting out of harm's way. Smartly done by Becky Lynch. You see, as Rhea Ripley shows off to the WWE Universe, that is the way you outsmart your opponent. And that is the way you outsmart Rhea Ripley. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as this has been one hell of a night, we are now getting backstage news that we got to get some cameras back there. But I'm getting word that Julius Creed, he has a message for Wade Barrett. Yeah, we're getting some cameras back there. We got to go see what's going on. I don't know what the hell is wrong with Die Jack, but I want to match with him tonight. Listen, listen, yeah, we can fit that in. Let me just move some things around and, and, and just gear up and get ready. I'll go let Die Jack know you got your match tonight. Take this as a mental note, Barrett. Nobody disrespects the Alpha Academy. Well, as it seems like Wade Barrett is going to be granting the matchup, and it's uh, official, it seems, that uh, uh, it is going to be Dijak going one-on-one -on -one with Julius Creed, as he seemingly seems like the last member standing of the Alpha Academy here tonight. It's crazy to think about what's went down over this whole episode, but Dijak is on a complete rampage. But ladies and gentlemen, Akum is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Kit Wilson. I want to take you back last week as, oh, you see there it was Razor to get the pin over Kofi Kingston. It was a quick little one, two, three, and that right there led the AOP team into the Unforgiven pay-per-view where they will join DIY for the Dance of Tag Team Wrestling. And it all goes down May 12th right here on Wrestle Plus for the newly Mayhem Tag Team Championships. Championships that have yet to be crowned here in Universe Mode. We are looking to crown our first ever. And the big question is, who will win as AOP has made their debut here in Season 3 of Universe Mode and they've turned up to say the least. They have definitely brought that seriousness to the tag team division as Aka making his singles debut here tonight, stepping away from the tag team division. But still, say the least, these guys are, are freaking dangerous. And to be going against a team like DIY, a team with so much heart, a team with so much soul, a team with so much fight. I mean, do you really expect DIY to give up that easily? It is going to be all over the place. I genuinely cannot wait to see it. But that's May 12th. Tonight's April 19th. It's Friday Night Mayhem. And it's time to go. As a yes, a boy. Kid Wilson is here. And he is ready to go as this one you see. 
is going to be strictly one on one. We're not looking for uh, Razor to get involved. We're not looking for Elton Prince to get involved. We are looking for a simply one on one affair between the two gentlemen. And we're going to see who's going to hash it out and get the job done here tonight. It's going to be a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content on the channel as more content is definitely coming you guys' way. And we'll comment down below what do you guys have thought about Pretty Deadly since arriving to the scene here in Universe Mode, making their debut late Season 2. And since then, they will, I definitely can say that they have been... Uh, They've been slowly getting behind by the WWE Universe. It's been a, it's been a slow brew. I want to see those predictions down below in the live chat and in the comments. Who do you think is walking away with the victory here tonight? Is it Kit Wilson? Is it Akum? Well, definitely Akum needs the momentum as he is going into Unforgiven with a matchup. But at the same time, that is not always the clear-cut case when it comes down to a, uh, a victory for uh, opponents here tonight. Well, this is going to be fairly interesting as Kit Wilson is also, seems like here as I'm looking through my notes, he is also making his debuting uh, singles match here tonight. So that's going to be interesting. Two singles or two tag teams who have been new here in Universe Mode making their singles debut against each other as this one goes down right now. Who was walking away with the victory? As Look at this now. Akum picks him up here. And oh, Kit Wilson takes him down there. Beautiful pin there by Kit Wilson looking to use the size to his advantage. But oh, Akum. Akum looking to turn that around. It seems like that right there might have stunned Kit Wilson, not expecting the big man to be so agile, be so quick on his feet. I mean, AOP, they're definitely full of surprises, and this right here can show you exactly whoa, what being a one on one can really do to their opponents. As DIY is, although it's a tag team matchup, only one man can be in the ring at a time. You still got to get used to that one on one capacity with a size. The size of this man into the cover. This has got to be it early and done. No. Kit Wilson staying alive, surviving in this one. And that's exactly what it seems like he is going to be doing here tonight. Surviving is, oh my God, clubbing down on the chest. Palming down, not playing any games here tonight with Kit Wilson. As Wilson now getting bounced right off of the ropes there. Ducking down there. Does Aikum and Aikum with a freaking dangerous power slam. Second cover in this one. Is this one going to be it? Kit Wilson. Surviving off of pure and utter instinct here tonight. Nothing else is keeping this man going. That tank is on E already. You can see it in his eyes. He looks like he wants to give up, but something. And Kit Wilson is keeping him going. Something in him is keeping that fight alive as Hakem's going to the top row. Not something we would uh, usually see from AOP as what does Hakem have in mind? Flying clothesline off the top rope. And now you see just clubbing down on the face of Kit Wilson spinning him around third cover in the matchup two and oh what oh man Akam's getting pissed off Akam is getting pissed off from this mentality by Kit Wilson as Wilson wants to do some damage Akam says no up on the shoulders he goes pouncing him right off Akum is going for three pin attempts in this matchup, and Kit Wilson has somehow stayed alive. And every time he seems, every time he seems like he has just something left, something more just happens. I mean, one punch by Kit Wilson is ten by Akum. As the crowd is getting their fill, their phones out for this one, as you can't blame him, as Kit Wilson. He's getting put in some pain here tonight. Oh my God. Wilson now getting destroyed on the outside. Listen, if I was Kit Wilson, I, oh my God, I would have just took the first pin. I would have just took the first pin. I mean, there's no reason to put yourself through this as Kit Wilson now brings Akum right back into the ring. Or excuse me, other way around. <laughs> Akum brings Kit Wilson right back into the ring. Is now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lining him up for what could be that last chapter. It is. Last chapter into the cover. This one has got to be it. No fight back after this one. No fight back at all. And I mean, come on. Can you blame him? This has been one hell of a matchup to say the least. But the fight that we have seen from Kit Wilson has said enough. And oh my God. Come on. Seriously? Come on, Akum. He's already won the match. He, he's basically marked his stamp on him. Dominating him. And now he's just adding insult to injury. I mean, 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we have to refocus here tonight, it has been one hell of a week here in Universe Mode. But as advertised, we are going to be hearing from the Judgment Day as we have a live microphone with Rhea Ripley and a camera backstage for the Judgment Day. Well, Julius Creed warming up for his match here tonight. And wait a minute, wait a minute. What the hell, Julius? Look out! Look out, Julius! Is oh! Dijak going right after Julius Creed. Not giving him any, any room to breathe. And now just taking advantage with a big boot. Big boot there by Dijak. And the referee rings the bell as this one is underway. Dijak, you know, picking apart Alpha Academy all night. As we know, he has an up-and-coming match coming up. As he is going to be, oh my god, going one-on-one -on -one with the leader of the Alpha Academy. Or I guess you can say co-leader of the Alpha Academy as Chad Gable holds that North American Championship. And Dijak won a gauntlet match a few weeks back here in Universe Mode. Deciding, deciding his fate as he is going to be going against Chad Gable. And we've been kind of waiting for the exchange of Alpha Academy and Dijak as... Dijak was more focused on Sheamus over the last couple of weeks, but now that Sheamus is kind of part ways doing his thing with Ridge Holland, we're still figuring out where Dijak kind of falls here on Mayhem, but right now he holds a crown, and that crown says number one contender. But ladies and gentlemen, Dijak looking to dominate here tonight, bouncing right off the rope in a big clothesline there as we're going to have to go on commercial break. We are going to be right back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, the next biggest pay-per-view that is coming your way to Universe Mode will be the Unforgiven pay-per-view coming your way live May 12th here. And it'll be premiering right here on the YouTube channel as this will be the first pay-per-view of 2K24 and the first pay-per-view since WrestleMania. It is going to be damn good as we are looking to step into this new era of Universe Mode. Will you join me? Will you walk with me? Will you let me cook? Find out May 12th. Well, May 12th is warming up to be an absolute banger as Unforgiven is coming your way. But like I was saying over the commercial break, now we're finally seeing that tension from Dijak. We're finally seeing that, that angry beast that we have been seeing him talk about. We've been seeing him slowly unleash it. And now he's unleashing it completely on Alpha Academy. I mean, smart strategy by Dijak as he's still controlling this matchup against Julius Creed. By the way, a matchup that Julius Creed asked for. Creed asked for this match with Adam Pearce. And now Creed... Creed looking to fight back here tonight as he, you know, his his mentor and Otis, his partner and Brutus Creed got laid out here tonight as, you know, Julius has a lot on his mind. Chad Gable, he's doing media. He's nowhere to be found as, oh, look at that big kick there by Dijak. Moved out of the way there by Julius Creed. Creed doing what he has to do here tonight as Dijak moves him out of the way and knocks him down. Judo kick there by Dijak. Dijak, no, come on. Don't do it to the kid, Dijak. Don't do it to him. Dijak, wait. Feast your eyes. Oh, man. Come on. It could have been done any other way. And Dijak, you know, voiced unto himself that he asked for this. And that he did. Julius Creed did ask for this. Show up to work next week. And Dijak just let it be known to Gable to show up to work next week because he's next and he's taking that title. You see, my name is AJ Styles. And I feel like over the last couple of months I have been disrespected, spit on, stepped on, and moved over like I am anybody else. And the truth is I am not anybody else. I'm not just phenomenal. Because that's just a catchphrase. Let's be honest. Let's let my in-ring work tell the tale. I do 
the work. I put in the work. I put away Bullet Club Gold at Clash of Champions and gave Raw one of their only wins. And what do they do? They simply reward bad behavior. They reward the failures of the company, the guys who have stories to start over, gain the fans, come back, and that's exactly what they do. They come back. But AJ Styles doesn't need a comeback because your boy is always on. It's hard to come back when you are always on top, and that is something that Brian Danielson decided to look over. Instead of asking me for a championship match at WrestleMania, what did he do? He decided to have an open challenge, leave it up for any and everybody instead of coming for the phenomenal one face to face like that wouldn't be a match that the world wants to see. You see, that's the problem with Brian Danielson. He thinks too much about what you guys want. And I don't give a damn about what you guys want. I give a damn about what's best for me, what's best for my pockets, and what's best for my career. And truth be told, I've given every single one of you a chance to recognize greatness at its finest. But I'm not getting any younger. And I refuse to stand back and sit around and wait for the approval of everybody sitting at home eating cheese doodles off their fingers fat slobs in front of the TV screen typing away on Twitter telling me about the kind of matches that I put on and giving me five star reviews. You think I give a damn about what you give me? I'm not here for that. I'm not here to be phenomenal for you. I'm here to do it for myself. I've been doing it for myself for the past 20 years and I would not stop now. You think Brian Danielson is the guy? You think Brian Danielson is somebody to be the end all be all? You think Brian Danielson is better than AJ Styles? Well, I want him to prove it. Because you got three weeks to do so. Because when we go to San Juan, when I step into the ring with you at Unforgiven, that's exactly what there will be. There will be no forgiveness in the ring. Because when I step to you face to face, I am going to beat you down. And I am going to bring you back to size. I am going to humble you, Brian. Because that right there, now that, that's phenomenal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, wait no further as coming up in your main event, it is going to be the human highlight reel Ricochet going one-on-one -on -one with the man who's a face of the green brand. He has beef with the Judgment Day, but he puts it aside tonight as he's looking to put on an absolute banger. It's Moxley. It's Ricochet. One-on-one. -on -one. It goes down in your main event. Up next. Listen, I'll be the first to say it. When it comes down to universe mode and just what you guys have done for this channel, it is just absolutely insane. And to think that we're only on episode 10 and we are already producing some of the best content that we have ever produced here on the channel, it is just makes me absolutely happy. It just makes me absolutely happy that we have such a semi-big community that can enjoy all this with us. Now, what's one thing when you know we have subscribers later on down the line and they look back on this season, but for the people that are in here in the moment with me now thank you so much because that genuinely means the world and i know how hard it is sometimes to get through an episode or something especially something that's a little longer these days and the fact that you guys genuinely enjoy this content it means all the world thank you so much for making this possible i truly believe that universe mode is back and we're going to continue to make it come back this year we're going to make universe mode the best it has ever been thank you guys so much and let's get back to the match for the second year ever, we are coming your way with Unforgiven, and we are looking to make it bigger, badder, and better than ever as we are stepping in not only to our second year of Unforgiven, but our third year in Universe Mode as our third season here. As we again, we are looking to make it bigger and better than ever. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the build. I hope you've been enjoying the match cards that are being put on display because these and this is just a short snippet of what's still to come as we still have more matches to come for the Unforgiven pay per view. It looks like a stack pay per view. I know but trust me and trust me when I say time does fly by and it does go by fast more match cards to come as we have a couple more weeks to the pay-per-view well ladies and gentlemen I want to welcome you all back as I can officially say it's time for the main event the human highlight reel himself his name is Ricochet. And ladies and gentlemen, it all goes down right here, right now, where Ricochet has a golden opportunity at a spot at the top. 
beating the world's heavyweight champion will do wonders, and I mean wonders, for your career as Ricochet stands here in a new season with the bright lights as primed and ready as ever. As Ricochet, we knew the minute he was drafted to Mayhem, we knew from that single second that he was going to sit here and show up and show the hell out. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he has a night to do exactly that. Win, lose, or draw. We know exactly what Ricochet is going to do when he steps into the ring. Ricochet, man, he's been in a handful of bangers here in Universe Mode. He has yet to have that spot at the top, but he is one of those guys here on Mayhem who, uh, well, again, he's definitely had that spot at the top, cherished it to say the least, but while going against a man like this, a man like no other, he is a wild thing, he is your world heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, John Moxley, this man is set to do great things with that title, but the slow brew has been exactly that. It's been slow brewing as Moxley has set his sights on the Judgment Day, and how he did it was taking out the biggest, the baddest, and the best of the Judgment Day, being Finn Balor. As we'll take you back to last week and how this one became to be, it all started with a message from Finn Balor telling us that the week before Moxley had injured him and Moxley came out and added insult to injury. What, what, what shocked everybody completely, ladies and gentlemen, was the fact that, well, the Judgment Day weren't here. N not JD, not Dominic, not Rhea, not Priest. None of the Judgment Day were here. And Moxley got a lot of clean hits in on Finn Balor, which I would assume would add on to the injury of, of Finn Balor, and we're still getting an estimate on when he's coming back. Things are kind of all over the place when it comes down to this picture, but uh, we're still trying to figure it out. But aside from that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you guys have not done it so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content on the channel because more content is coming you guys' way. As I want to also let you guys know in the beginning of the show, Moxley had mentioned, listen, if you got a problem with me, I'm around. But do not interrupt the sacredity of this wrestling match. And, well, we haven't seen the Judgment Day all night except for their little message a little while ago from Rhea Ripley. As Rhea Ripley claims that they are going to make John Moxley hurt. They are going to make him suffer. They claim it won't happen tonight, but it'll happen very, very soon as this one is right underway and Moxley going right after Ricochet here tonight, knocking him down. Beautifully done there by Moxley. Moxley, though, trying to do something big there, but Ricochet with a beautiful knee there. Knee combination right there, knocking down the world's heavyweight champion, John Moxley, as Moxley still has that arm taped up there as Ricochet looking to take advantage. Beautiful splash there by Ricochet into the cover. Is this one going to be it here? First one, no. Ricochet, everything he does, he has a little bit of finesse when he does it and that right there might be the driving factor in this matchup that right there might be the thing to help Ricochet walk away with the victory but Moxley now with a big leg drop and no Ricochet moves out of the way beautifully done there by Ricochet as Ricochet now has something in store here for Moxley as he kicks him down right in the face beautifully done there by oh by Ricochet to John Moxley as Moxley now big trouble here Ricochet Following through over the ropes now, using those ropes to his advantage. You see, this man is like, <laughs> it's like this man's moving in Mars, man. There's no gravity. As look at this now, Ricochet top rope where he's most comfortable. Man, oh man, Ricochet dropping down. Dropping down and making it hurt. Two and no. My God, I mean, Ricochet coming off hot and heavy in this one here tonight, not playing any games with the world's heavyweight champion. The champion still a little staggered from last week, it seems, but he seems like he needs to, uh, or I can't even say it seems like he's going to need to get himself together in this one as Ricochet bounces off of him and takes him down there as Ricochet had a beautiful showcase a couple of weeks ago here in Universe Mode in the gauntlet match to decide who was going to take on the man himself, oh man, missed out there by Ricochet, but back up to his feet. But as I was saying, as uh, 
you know, as we've seen a couple of weeks ago on the Gauntlet match, Ricochet put on a damn good performance against J.D. McDonough as John Moxley gets the knees up there. Beautifully done there by Moxley. Moxley playing this one a bit, a bit slow to the chest here, trying to be uh, uh, strategic as Ricochet is all over the attack. Beautiful spine buster there. Beautiful, beautiful spine buster there by John Moxley as Ricochet. Wow, kick out at one. Definitely not expecting that off the human highlight reel, but John Moxley's gonna have to make it hurt if he wants to put away Ricochet as Ricochet has had the most to gain in this matchup right here. Moxley has the most to lose as Moxley now understanding the situation that he's in, moving Ricochet right out of the way. Beautifully done there by Mox, and Mox once again. Once again, John Moxley making it hurt and making it damn sure. Making damn sure he uh, walks away with the victory here tonight as John Moxley now Irish whip bouncing him right off of the ropes and no gets tangled up there with Ricochet. Don't you changing directions? Ricochet though moving out of the way and Ricochet now lining up Moxley on the ropes. Moxley in trouble. Boom! Dropping down on Moxley. This one's not looking good for the world champion as I hit my words there. Moxley. Moxley getting Ricochet out of this one and now hitting him with a beautiful loop that's press here. Ricochet. Like a cat in this matchup. He is all over the place and somehow somewhere he's been able to land on his feet. But this right here might be the trajectory changer for John Moxley. As Moxley needs to do what he has to do to walk away with the victory and further his chapter in this in this story with the judgment day. As look at this now, Moxley. Oh man, oh man, they don't call him high risk Mox for no reason. Moxley giving the crowd a little something. Money's worth superplex off the top. Ricochet rolling to the outside as Ricochet's down and out. Nowhere to go, Moxley. Running the ropes for good effort. What a match here tonight as Ricochet hurting in this one. Referee on the count of four. And Moxley talking a lot of trash to Ricochet as we're going to have to go on commercial break as these two brawl on. We'll be right back right after this. Coming up this Monday, it is going to be semis finals action as LA Knight goes one on one with the best in the world himself, CM Punk. Who's going on forgiven? Find out this Monday. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from commercial break as Ricochet now. Ricochet now looking to turn this one around. Ricochet getting a small pocket of opportunity during the commercial break and capitalizing where it all matters. And oh my God, bringing Moxley right into the still steps there as the referee's counting on and on. And this one has seemingly got personal out of nowhere. Ricochet off the top. Jumping over the barricade, or excuse me, jumping over that still post, jumping over that still steps. Ricochet is unreal. Unfreaking real as look at this now, Moxley. Oh, Uses that barricade to his advantage, knocking Ricochet right back into there. And now Moxley breaking the count for his own benefit in this one. I mean, what a match. Ricochet, Moxley, both men are, are putting everything on the line here tonight to prove that this show means that much more to them. I mean, this isn't for a title. This isn't for momentum. Both of these guys are going their own ways after this one. This one right here is for the love of the game as Moxley now tries to put this one away with a quick cover. And this one here tonight, he was not trying to take the count out victory. He wants a pinfall or submission, and you can't blame the World Heavyweight Champion here tonight as Moxley now brings Ricochet right off of the ropes. Both men getting tangled up there. Moxley throwing a couple kicks, a couple of strikes there to Ricochet, not playing any games with him, doing what he has to do. Some more knees for his own, for good efforts. And now, wait a minute, Moxley feeling the momentum following through big old lariat the strength by John Moxley needs to be studied needs to be talked about as look at this ricochet staggered Moxley Moxley has him exactly where he needs him to be right into the corner he goes and following through Man, oh man, oh man, what a match we are seeing here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you guys once again so much for watching this one. If you haven't done so, so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. As Moxley almost took out the referee there, going to have to worry and watch out there for Charles Robinson. He isn't, a, uh, he isn't used to taking those bumps like the rest of them. Elbow drop off the top. This has got to be it. Wrap it up. Two and no. Moxley. Moxley just as surprised as the rest of us as Ricochet found a way to get up to his feet. 
But now Moxley lining him up for what could be the beginning of the end. Mox DDT and now lining him up for a maneuver that we've been seeing for the last couple of weeks. Will we see it? Or will Ricochet find a way out? Lines him up. Mox Driver into the cover. It's over. Moxley does it here tonight. John Moxley walks away your winner as the world's heavyweight champion does exactly what he said he was gonna do and that is win 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 as oh wait a minute wait a minute we gotta cut back to the ring the godfather of the judgment day is here with mommy women's world champion standing face to face with john moxley as priest takes him down down goes the champion Lines him up, south of heaven. Moxley getting laid out as Rhea Ripley talks smack. Talk smack, and wait, no, wait a minute, no. Riptide, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest making the biggest statement they can make. Unforgiven, I'm taking that World's Heavyweight Championship. What? What the hell?